Hi there, welcome to this demo of creating a logical data warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics SQL serverless pools. We're going to just dive right in and go through the process. So we've got Synapse Studio open. I'm going to click on my develop tab and I'm going to set up a database in serverless SQL pools. So I'm going to create the database. I'm then going to create an external data source. I'm just going to refresh. Create an external data source, which is a link to the data lake storage in Azure. I'm going to create a file format. Parquet, because I'm going to save the data that I'm going to read as Parquet. So we'll come on to that in a bit. We're going to create schemas, just like a regular database. So we'll click run, we'll click run. Now we're going to just alter the database for UTF-8 support. And the last thing I'm going to do is these credentials allow my own Active Directory account to access the Azure storage account. So I'm going to create master key. And lastly, database scoped credential. OK, so if you head over to the data tab, expand the databases and refresh. You can see that we have our new database there. And we've got a couple of external resource objects. We've got our link to the data lake and also our Parquet file format. Now we go back to the develop tab. And we're going to create some views over data that's in our data lake. So what we can do is we can go back to the data tab click on linked, expand the storage accounts that we've got attached to our Synapse workspace. And we have some source data. So we've got the source data systems. Okay, so this is CSVs of data from the world or the worldwide importers, the wide world importers database. They've just been exported to CSV. And we also have some sales data, which is partitioned. Okay, so we've got a partition scheme of year, month, day. There's only a handful of days here for demo purposes. And we've got the CSV files here that contain that raw sales data. Okay, so we're going to go back to our views and we're going to create a view using the open row set and we're going to point towards where our CSV data is for our stock items. Now what we can do is we can just run the select before we create the view, make sure everything's working as expected. I'll run that, it'll take a few seconds and we'll get back the data that's in the storage account. Okay, now I'm going to keep it simple and just create views by selecting all. Okay, I've got some options here to tell serverless SQL that I've got um, a header row, that the field terminator is pipe. So we'll create view for the stock items. Now this is just a query that source stock items data in the data lake. We'll do the same for this colors data because a product or a stock item has a color. So we'll run that to create a view. And the last is the package type. So an item is linked to a package type. So we've got three source views that we can use to query that source data. We're going to create a view for the sales orders. Okay, now note in this bulk command here, okay, I've got 
three asterisks here. I've got a fourth, okay, but I'm not going to filter based on that. Okay, now I'm going to expose the file path of the year, the month, and the date folder by using this file path function. So again, if I just run a select, and then down here, we can see that we scroll to the right and we've got three columns, the year, the month, and the file path date that are being extracted based on the file path here. We can actually use these exposed file path functions in the view to filter. So we could select from this view and say, well, I only want data for the 15th of April, and it would filter out any folder that didn't match that criteria. Therefore, it wouldn't scan any data. So we'll create the view there. And the last thing is, we'll create a view for the sales order lines because we have a, a, a header and a, a line item structure in that source data. Okay. Go back to our workspace. We're going to refresh the database. And if we expand views, we're going to see that we've got five views there, our two sales order, sales order lines, and our three system data, colors, package types, and stock items. Okay. Now, we can just query this data. Okay. So we come down here and we just say, well, you know, well, let's let's just select all. It's not that much data. So we'll select from that source view. And we can see this is just a representation of the data that's stored in the CSV. Okay, no transformation, no movement, nothing. Now, if we like to get that into a, a better structure for analytical purposes or reporting purposes, then we can denormalize some of these views into a dimension and actually write that data back to the data lake using the create external table as select command. So we can see here that we can create an external table called it dim stock item. I've specified a location. I've specified the data source, which is the connection to our data lake and the format in which I would like that data written. And I've constructed my SQL query, a standard SQL based query to construct a dimension. I have a, a, a row number to create a, a surrogate key. And I'm just going to use a, a default date for a, a valid from date. Okay, and I've joined my three views together to flatten my table. So I'm going to create the external table here. Now, it's worth noting that the create external table process here is really only doing one thing. It's writing the data to the folder. I don't actually want to use that external table to query the data because at some stage, and I'll save this for the next video, is that we see here we've got uh, dim stock item 01 is that when we get some changed data from our source system, okay, we can write that data out to a second folder, a third folder, a fourth folder, etc. And my view to query all that data is over the root of the dim stock item folder. But we've only loaded an initial data set at the moment, so that's what will be relevant. We're also going to create a view for a dim date. And I've just got a, a CSV file that is a standard date dimension. So I'm going to create that view there as well. 
Now, what we're going to do is go back to our lake house or our Azure storage. The, uh, the container is called Data Lake House. And we can now see we've got this conformed folder, dimensions, dim stock item, 01, and we've got a parquet file that contains the data that we've written to the data lake. Okay, and I can query that using the dim stock item view. So again, we'll just do a select all from dim stock item. Take a few seconds and we'll get back our surrogate key, our stock item ID, and all the attributes that we want, okay? Now, when we want to create facts, we're going to do it the same way. We're going to use CTAS. Okay, I've got an initial folder that I'm going to load this initial data into. Okay, it is worth noting if I've got an, a lot of source data partitioned in the data lake as years, months, and dates that I can change this and use a dated folder. Okay, like that. And then I would use a where clause here to specify the date that I wanted to load the data from. Okay, so in effect, I'm using this create external table to write partitions. Now this video, we're just gonna have initial. We'll run that create external table statement. Okay. And the last thing we'll do is we're going to create a view over that initial folder. Okay. If we go back to storage, go back to our conformed, we've got facts and we've got fact sales and we've got a single parquet file. It's a small amount of data. If it was a large amount of data, you may see multiple parquet files. You don't have control over the number of parquet files that you can write at the moment in serverless SQL pools. Okay. Now, after we've created the facts, we can query. So I'm just going to run an aggregate query where I'm joining the fact sales to my date dimension and my stock item dimension. So when I run that query, I'm going to get my data back there. Okay, so this has just been a very simple, short video on going through setting up connections to Azure Storage, how to create a database within serverless SQL pools, how to create views to query source CSV data, and then how to use the create external table as select syntax to take that CSV and write it to Parquet, uh, a column store file format, which is a lot better for analytical processing. So in part two of this video, we'll look at incrementally loading the fact data and also slowly changing dimensions Thanks for watching.